Thank you very much, Igor. So this was the first half of the treatment session. Um, and before the coffee break, there's time for some questions. Christian? So, Christian Torborg from Copenhagen. So this is a question for you, Igor. Um, so I couldn't really see your data, so I think it's really important that we can see the Hager's data, but I, from what I could, could see on the Hager sports, they were quite low still um, during these weeks. So I'll, and uh, we learned from yesterday from Eamon Delahunt that the cut point for the increased risk was 87.5%. Sorry. And uh, so I would say they have a previous injury and they're below the cut point, so they're really at increased risk of getting a new injury. That's point number one. Point number two is that you, you say it seems safe, but I would also say this is, usually this is an orthopedic joke, but it's uh, nothing ruins good results as follow-up. And I think in this kind of study, you really have to make sure you follow up, because if I were a footballer and were in this study, and your treatment was bringing me back fast in play, and I would um, have a re-injury or a, even a, a worsening in symptoms, why should I go back to you? Because you're just going to bring me back to play. Do you understand? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I totally agree because we didn't take into account any re-injury numbers. We don't have them right now. And I think you're very sure that you, you take some risk with um, getting re-injured but <coughs> still it's worthwhile to see h how it works and if people really get re-injured these were not um, professional players so I think that makes a difference and um, pe I think they're more they have more time probably and they're not so pressured by themselves and their environment so it may be that these amateurs um, they are capable of coaching themselves. I'm not sure, but we need to find out more on that. Yeah. With respect to the Hagos scores, I think, um, well, you, you say they're still quite low, but no, I'll, I will show you if you're interested. Sure. Um, but I think it's uh, the, the at 12 weeks they they passed the the level that's been described yesterday, the 87 <coughs> points. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, there was a light, uh, wide variance, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sagar? Uh, thank you very much for your presentations. Uh, I have a question for Jeff. And first, a small comment. Uh, I couldn't help noticing uh, you defined uh, in the Newton's law uh, acceleration as a change of distance over time, and it would be speed, and cha acceleration change of speed over time. So maybe a small mistake, but uh, my question would be, when you offload, and usually you said you do it off-season, off uh, and an athlete comes to you, what would you say, what would be the success, I mean, the prediction of success over the next six or eight, or eight weeks, because that's usually the break? Uh, you, the success of offloading, is what you're asking? Um, I did publish it in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, and... Um, they basically had three months where they didn't do much turning and twisting and there was an 89% successful return to sport rate the next year. Um, however, at the start of the year, 60% of them still had pain and by the end of the, that following season, 40% still had pain and by the end of the second season, about 18% were playing in a lower level than what they started, which is a, a significant downside. So... Um, I haven't seen that reproduced in, a, in an intervention sense any more than offloading them and doing a rehab program, but that would be my results. Oh, and the, if I can just add to that, it's really interesting the, the fact that they're, they're playing with pain because I think this happens loads and the way we're often looking at outcome now, we're not capturing this. The way I did my study 
uh, and a lot of studies are done, we're just talking about return to play and sticking a percentage on it. We worked on a tendinopathy study, Robert Chan and I, with other Dutch group, and if you follow up patients with Achilles tendinopathy after five years and you ask them are they satisfied, 80% are satisfied. If you turn the question around and say, do you still have pain? 80% still have pain. Uh, so there's this huge group who are really happy and they're doing sport, but they're managing their pain. Uh, so if we just present simple return to play percentages, and this is why the Hagos is a really important additional instrument, and it's nice to see Igor as being, I think, one of the first treatment studies is actually starting to use the Hagos. So I, I would encourage everybody as we move forward, if you're going to start to publish results, that we stop just saying simple percent return to play and report symptomatology and function uh, using a patient-related outcome score. And this would really help us to move the field forwards instead of just having a race who's got the highest percentage. A question from Dr. Myers. A d delightful group of uh, talks and congratulations. And just a, a comment uh, to, to Ernest uh, for, your, for some additional ammunition that you might want to use. The um, NFL data bank uh, works by having a single point uh, right before the player gets released. And then once they get the released, and if they're healthy at the time, the, there's no obligation, no further obligation for the team to pay them anymore. So the, the, uh, it's going to be skewed towards non-operation. And in fact, several of those patients, like in a previous rectus femoris study, uh, ended up having surgery for their injuries. So I'm just, just uh, an additional uh, thing for your data, for your, uh, for your conclusions, a comment, yeah. But, but I think one of the main points in the study is, is, um, is the imaging, basically, where they, um, where they use evidence which is incorrect, basically. Where they, basically, what, what has happened is, is, what probably has happened is that they, um, if, if you do your sagittal cuts through the adductor longus, uh, it's, it's very easy to go across the midfield and, and cut to, the, to your normal fiber cartilage. And I think that's what they've done with the study in order to prove that, yeah. Yes, I, I'm not sure you understand. But, I'm but no, I'm, 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 agreeing, I'm agreeing yeah. with you. I'm agreeing. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, Andrea Sarno, physiotherapist. Uh, so we're doing the, the study on the acute uh, adductor tears here. And on... In Keep the mic in front of your mouth. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, so first a question. How many of the uh, uh, acute adductor avulsions uh, have you actually followed up? Um, the ones that haven't gotten the surgery, have you followed up with uh, an MRI after a year? Um, we... We, we don't we follow them up clinically and and um, so um, a, a, as you probably could have seen I mean not not everybody with, with a, um, a acute adductor longus fiber cartilage infusion will get surgery yes, so there's a there's a there's a whole variety of of subtypes that, that you can see uh, um, but but um, I mean the the, the the ones where the fiber cartilage is not displaced um, uh, you, you treat uh, non-operatively. The ones where you have a partial version, you, ten, you tend to treat non-operatively. But there's no, the, there's no, yeah, the, there's, there's no point in following them up if, they, if clinically they are doing all, doing all right uh, from, from, from our point of view because it, it's very difficult in, in professional athletes to, to get them back for scans uh, a year down the line just for the sake of a, of a study, basically. It would, would be great information, but it's, practically it's a bit difficult. So just a short comment. It's because you claim that, that, that the adductor longus doesn't, doesn't come back to the pubic bone. Uh, no, no, no. Once it's off, it's off. Yeah. Uh, uh, when, when it's off, it displaces. And it, if, if it displaces, usually it displaces a few centimeters. It displaces distally and laterally. So, so there's, there's no way how, how that gap can be bridged. Uh, that, that, that doesn't happen. We, we, the, the ones... The ones where we have um, uh, basically imaging uh, some some time, but we have a, we have a series of, of a number of uh, athletes who um, who actually had been through some conservative management first, and and then then because they, they didn't manage to get back because of pain and lack of strength, uh, we we scanned them uh, anything between uh, three months and a year uh, post injury, and, and in, in those cases. 
uh, when the uh, fabric arch was avulsed, it never came back to the same. Uh, it's, it's not possible. So, so we have n equals one, but but there it's it's back. It doesn't look it doesn't look normal, but uh, but we'll continue if, to, to follow. If you up. can, if you can show me an MRI scan where you have the pictures uh, pre-injury and post-injury, the, the exact same sequences, then I tend to believe you. But but when it's avulsed and displaced with a few, few centimeters, there's absolutely no way it can come back. It's impossible. Okay. The question here, Damien. Uh, Damien Griffin from England. A question for Jeff. Uh, you described shortening of the ligaments in the hip capsule uh, in order to restrict external rotation of the hip, uh, and you explained how that would make the adductors more uh, efficient, more mm. capable. Um, we have some patients who have uh, problems because their sport, such as ballet, involves a lot of external rotation activity, and they end up with difficulty because those ligaments become stretched and they become unstable. So, so what do you think is the mechanism by which a ligament could shorten in order to make muscles more efficient? Um, I, I don't think there's a clear answer to that, but we do see some examples in the shoulder. So when the, the throwers will find themselves with more external rotation if they just keep putting their shoulder through more external rotation and they'll lose internal rotation. So the exact mechanism is not really known. It's thought to be, you know, like all the other parts of injury repair, injury repair cycle. So I'm just, I just think that if you make the tension of the external rotators of your adductor, then that would be silly for your leg to be sitting in external rotation when you're trying to go forward. So something adjusts for that to happen. Now, it won't just be the uh, external rotating ligaments of the hip, it'll be everything that'll be trying to get tighter. But the mechanism is not you know, really clear. If we knew that, we would know it. I have a question for uh, Adam. Uh, the EMG um, the that they used in the, in the shorts, the directional shorts, uh, it was surface EMG, and you said it was a Dr. Longus. Is that possible, or would it just be the adductor group, or what, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think in uh, these studies, I'd be happy to just say adductors uh, instead of longus, perhaps. So they're, they're going with their best estimate, as I understand it, uh, of where they put the uh, where they put the electrodes. Uh, we've done some studies in Holland using it that we plan to publish. But again, it's uh, based on the, the, the clinical palpation, uh, how we did it as well. So I would, we could replace longus with adductors. I'll be happy with that. Yeah. Just a thought. Would, would you think it could be? Could it be even ris a risk actually to to decrease the adductor activity? Because if it's a, a general phenomenon and, and you are changing something in that in the muscle group that we have talked about for two days now, that being very important. Just a thought. Yeah. No. No. Interesting. Uh, interesting thought. They they did. Uh, have them cut on a, on a force plate and measured the ground reaction force as they cut, which didn't change. And I think if I'm not a biomechanist, but I would, I would guess that if you say, okay, one structure is working less hard, uh, the forces are the same, it probably means you're taking up that slack somewhere else in the system, that something else will be forced to work harder. Uh, and in that sense, maybe... I don't think it's a risk for the adductors, but you could perhaps hypothesize or argue maybe you're putting more stress on something else, but then I would hope that's healthy tissue and that's uh, up to the challenge. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to comment on that. In, for, for tennis elbows, very often they use um, those support braces, uh, which you put just a bit below the elbow, so they call, call it counter force bracing. Yeah. It's probably a similar principle that you can use in, for the adductors. I use compression shorts uh, quite, quite often post, post surgery just to, to, to do a bit of counter force breathing of the adductor area. Any last comment from Jacob? Question? 
I would just like to ask uh, Igor and Adam, uh, how many times would you perform the manipulation uh, before, and if it doesn't give results, when you would say maybe send them to Ernest or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the way it was done in the, in the study and also the way Dr. van der Sande and myself later used it in clinical practice, you'll do one session with three to five manipulations until you felt, okay, now there's a symmetrical bent knee fallout. You're happy that that's as, uh, as much force as you dare to apply. Uh, and if there's no effect at four weeks, you would repeat the session once. Uh, and if it hasn't worked after two sessions, then uh, I wouldn't repeat again after that. And that's the same used in both the studies. And I, it's a while ago, but I think it's about 20% of the patients have had two manipulative sessions. For, for what we did, we used only one, <coughs> one session, and it was uh, three times 10 repetitions, a uh, second, sorry, 10 seconds. And afterwards, we performed uh, 30, 30 seconds of stretching. So it's a very <coughs> short period that you're working with it. There's no repeated, uh, no repeated treatment. Thank you very much. This has been a series of interesting presentations on very difficult subjects, I think. So thank you very much, and we'll meet again in half an hour. Well done, Jeff.